Across generations, the horror genre has found lifelong fans with franchises like Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, or Child's Play. For me, my love of horror began and expanded to this day thanks to the Saw franchise. My name is Ren, and this is my review of Saw X. Welcome back, horror fans. Thank you for joining this Jigsaw Disciple as we travel back between the events of Saw and Saw 2, as a sick and desperate John Kramer travels to Mexico for a risky experimental medical procedure in hopes of a miracle cure for his cancer, only to discover the entire operation is a scam to defraud the most vulnerable. Armed with a newfound purpose, the infamous serial killer returns to his work, turning the tables on the con artists in his signature visceral ways through deranged, devious and ingenious traps. Like I said, I am a lifer Jigsaw disciple who, like any fan of a long-running horror franchise, has been burned twice in a row in the past. And yet, every time Jigsaw comes a-calling, I cannot control my excitement. It has been a while since I enjoyed a Saw film while also recognizing it is a perfectly well-made film that stands on its own. 13 years, to be precise. So, despite not quite loving Saw X, I'm not even disappointed. One of the best elements of the film is finally placing Tobin Bell, John Kramer, as our POV anti-hero, preying upon those who prey on the hopeless themselves, which, in the hands of the director of Saw 6 VI and 7, plus the editor of many more Saw films in the franchise, allows it a sense of freshness that doesn't compromise the integrity of what works in a Saw film. Because let's face it, this is still a Saw film. Following John Kramer as our protagonist not only allows Tobin Bell to elaborate on the complexity of his performance, but also allows us insight beyond the self-righteous manipulator, the mastermind game planner. He is still all those things in the film, but we also see his humanity, his vulnerability, the hopelessness of the man. The Saw films always excel when they explore the twisted morality of Jigsaw and or his disciples. Saw X not only explores it, but it questions it, because not only is John Kramer back, Amanda is back with Shawnee Smith once more playing off of Tobin Bell wonderfully. Their dynamic is entirely new to the franchise, and it explores certain parts of their dynamic that were too shrouded in mystery. Where many other Saw films would offer brief flashback glimpses to specific moments in time after everything is done, Saw X fleshes out the vulnerable bond between Master and Apprentice at their lowest, where John Kramer understands the inescapable fate that awaits him and Amanda feels the pressure of not being ready to take over once he's gone. And so you're allowed this compelling dynamic that feels human, that adds dimensions and layers to their characters. And so both Tobin Bell and Shawnee Smith offer their best performances in the entire franchise. Making Saw X one of the most focused films in the franchise by telling this self-isolated story about Jigsaw and Amanda punishing those who gave John Kramer false hope without convoluting the narrative by jumping back and forth in time as many Saw films did, overwhelmingly taking fans away from the franchise. What it also brings back is the grungy, dirty, lived-in aesthetic of the Saw films that I have missed dearly. Saw X, much like the other best Saw films, has this DIY feel to it that enhances the claustrophobia and the suspense thanks to the abandoned warehouse setting and a great balance between the continuous soap opera style storyline that connects and enhances to the wider franchise, but also the focus on the trap sequence that really doesn't deviate from being the focus of the film. This film has a continuous, connected trapping sequence where all these characters know each other and we also really dislike these characters. We know what they've done, not only to John Kramer, but to other people. So he's positioned as a character who's bringing them righteous punishment. And these are memorable, gnarly, squirm-inducing traps and create that sense of engagement through our victims 
always watching one another play these games and puts us in that position of could I survive this? Could I get out? What would I do? I don't know that the time frames to get out of these traps are realistic, but they add to that continuous tension throughout. And because you get to cut between the victims and John Kramer and Amanda, you also get to see a little bit of how he got to these people, how he arranged for all these traps, how he built all these mechanisms and how he got his hands into all the sorts of equipment he would need. In between those traps and victims, you get these moments of Jigsaw being interrogated about his moral standards, his moral code. The way he ties each specific victim to a trap creates these beats in between that confront him about his actions and about the way he sees the world, challenge Jigsaw for who he is, and inform us about the things we know are going to happen through the rest of the franchise. There are many Easter eggs to lifelong fans, but again, it feels welcoming to new fans who don't care for a convoluted narrative, don't care for a convoluted connection, and are just interested in a self-isolated story. For longtime fans, you'll get glimpses at many classic Saw tropes, and there is a post credit scene that had me jumping with excitement. I would love to discuss spoilers with you, so if you want a spoiler review, let me know in the comments below. Where the film finds some pitfalls for me is that it takes a while to start. Because it's spending so much time with Jigsaw, we see him growing through this procedure. We see all that happens for him to be wrong. And you can tell the filmmakers wanted to welcome new fans because otherwise we just start with these victims and jump back and forth to see how each one of them wronged John Kramer, how he got him to this place, how Amanda came into the picture. And while John Kramer positioned as an anti-hero really works for the film, on the other hand, I really love not knowing really who the victims are while they're playing these games and finding that out as the narrative twists its way and unravels, gives us the reveals and crescendos to the moment when Hello Zap plays. There are literally not many moments in anything that give me a sense of elation and excitement as much as when the beat drops for Hello Zap. Saw X as one of the great moments in the franchise with that drop. And we've been in moments where we really don't care, where they fail completely at dropping the Hello Zap. And because of that, it takes a while for the film to properly get started, for the games to begin. So because from the beginning you know these con artists are despicable people, there's no fun in learning more about the victims as the games unravel, which for me has always been part of the fun. The fun in these traps is seeing the practical effects and the carnage candy all over the place. There's also a decision into the third act, without revealing too much, that completely lacked tension for me because this is a prequel. This is a mequel. And so it was just a matter of waiting. How is this going to turn out the way I know it's going to turn out? And it's effective and it works, but clearly the filmmakers wanted that moment to be much more suspenseful than it actually effectively was. Still, Overall, Saw X gives me everything I want a Saw film to give me while bringing something new to the franchise and allowing the filmmakers to explore facets of the characters and times and traps that we had never seen before, breathing new life into the franchise and hopefully opening new paths for it to continue. As a lifelong fan of the franchise, I feel happy and content in having a good Saw film that comfortably sits in my top four in this franchise, right next to Saw 2, with Saw 1 as my number one, Saw 6 as my number two, and I'm still debating if I prefer this or two, so it demands a rewatch. Seriously, stay for that mid credit scene. So as I dive into my final thoughts on Saw X, it's time for you to start the conversation about it in the comments below. Rank all the Saw films, including this one if you've seen it, and what is your favorite trap? 
in the franchise. Anything and everything down there. And if you're enjoying this review, there's many more like it right up here. I would love to keep talking Saw with you. So if you want to talk Saw, if you want to talk more movies and TV, this is the place to be. Consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. Saw X returns the franchise to gruesome glory. Tobin Bell as a twisted narrative core enriches the ravenous gore fest with moral themes while Shawnee Smith adds compelling depth and the traps are to die for. Lacks tension in places but Hello Zap fully engrosses you and the film into gear. I'm giving Saw X a B. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy playing this game and I'm excited to continue the conversation with you down in the comments. Big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel. Let me know if you want a Saw X spoiler review and I'll be back very soon with more videos. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies.